Hello there, and welcome back to the Natalie and Where's Dennis? <laughs> Dennis Show podcast. podcast. Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome back to your favorite podcast. Imagine. <laughs> so, what's going on today, Natalie? Shit, what isn't going on today? Literally, I have been up since four thirty, honey. <gasps> I know that you all Gasp. have also. You're like running. We don't have Davi today in the studio. We're filming very unexpectedly. We are leaving to, should we say where? Yeah, let's just say where. Ibiza. Ibiza. Is it Ibiza or Ibiza? I don't know. Ibiza. We're leaving on a really fun summit retreat with literally the creators of the Five Minute Journal, Mimi and Alex Icon. I'm so excited for that. They're amazing people, first of all. We had lunch at their... Wait, was it lunch or dinner at their house we, a long time ago? We were actually on their podcast. Their energy is like so zen. Yes. And so calm. And like they're genuinely like amazing people. And like to be yeah. invited to something like that is like really crazy. Yeah. And I think what's even cooler is recently we're getting invited like together as a duo, which never happens. And that's been fun. Like we got invited to a, a John Legend uh like freaking john legend but it's like yeah. natalie and dennis it's amazing i think like <laughs> since the beginning of the podcast i first of all guys i'm switching the cameras around and i'm gonna have some issues because i gotta do a little bit of everything but it's always been natalie and i honestly do not care like you're it's always cool i'm scenes. always like just kind of like there but you know to be invited also and to have my name in there i don't know if it's due to the podcast or like why it's starting to happen but I also think maybe our manager is like pitching both of us. I have a feeling. So I, I don't nice. know. I just think that it's been really amazing. And I mean, for me, like Dennis, for example, Dennis really likes going to VidCon and stuff like that. I personally, I'm not a big fan of like events where there's too many people. I get really like overwhelmed by it. Um, but now, like, imagine if they invited you to VidCon. Like, I feel like you would just go. I would go. But only, I would, go ahead, only if I could do like a panel where we talk to other creators about like just production. You know, I uh, if you follow me on Instagram, I actually just posted a time lapse of like the setup, you know, and those are the kinds of things that make me like thrive. You know, I love going to like camera stores when we're traveling. I love looking at new equipment. I like looking at things that make us like more effective when it comes to filming. Yeah. And so I enjoy that aspect of it. Where was I recently? I was talking to somebody that they were like, um, oh, um, you're so like lucky that you know how to do like tech stuff and everything like that. I'm like, mm, no, not really. Like my husband is the one that helps me with everything. And she was just saying how incredible that must be. Like I'm the creative and you're more of like the tech and like behind the scenes and like you assist me in so much. And I feel so grateful, honey, to have you like seriously. <laughs> well, I'm very grateful to be able to do this for you you know i think it's a team effort right it is and we've mentioned before how we kind of balance each other out like yin and yang like you yeah. do you're good at certain stuff and i'm good and then when we get put together i just want to mention dennis was sweet enough today to also bring me coffee because today is such a grind hard day i've been up since four in the morning um, I finally got out of bed at like 430 and I've been so tired, obviously. And we've been taking like little siesta naps and stuff like that, but it just doesn't feel like enough. We're really grinding this next um, week. And remember last night I sent you like this whole itinerary of the day. <laughs> and Dennis, and I was like, <laughs> no, literally, it's like a whole itinerary with little exclamation points. If you're on YouTube, you can oh, look at the visuals of it a little bit. Yeah. But it's like. 5 a.m. I'm going to the gym. 6 to 7, I'm working on like this worksheet stuff. Okay. And then I'm like 8 a.m. sharp. I need breakfast from you, handsome. Like, please help me out. And like he set up for the podcast. And, so yeah, so in, in the reality is we're flying out tomorrow. It's our first time we're going to Europe. Well, like yeah. we mentioned, it's Ibiza. And so we still had to shoot this podcast just to be on schedule. Right. And you woke up at 4. Yeah. Right. And you went to bed at 8.30. Yeah. It's really it. crazy. Like... <laughs> I don't know you it's nice because you really like push to get your eight hours or seven hours of sleep yes and, but I don't know anybody else that would do something like that like sleep earlier to get the time well here's the thing I think that it goes along with our last episode of boundaries and if I don't give myself that time I know all day I'm going to be out of whack I'm not gonna I would probably sleep in not go to the gym then not get things done and like I got to get shit done today like people are relying on me like we had to film this podcast we are here you know what I mean so that's half the job. You just got to show up. So, yeah, honey. So in terms of boundaries, right? You know how in the last episode we talked about it? Yeah. Um, You know, sometimes people cross boundaries. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to forgive people. I think that's the word that I was looking for. Yeah. To just let them kind of like 
let it slide. You know, Mm -hmm. has there ever been a moment where you just simply can't like forgive somebody or like you can't look, look over something that they did to you? Have you ever been like really offended to the point where like you can't take it back or you feel different towards this person at that point? I think for me, honestly, first of all, I'll get back to that just in a moment. But because in the last episode, because we talked about that, there were so many people in the comments that wrote about boundaries and issues that they have with their parents, which I think is like very sensitive. And I appreciated you guys being so vulnerable about that. We've spoken about how, you know, especially with like immigrant parents, we're always kind of feeling like we have to assist in so many things. There's a lot of pressure on us to help them with a lot of stuff. But in regards to boundaries, I would say I'm such a people pleaser and i'm very kind that sometimes when i hear someone say something that i'm like wait a second like in my head i'm myself you know i'm like my sassy self and i'm like wait a second that didn't sound right i won't be the type of person right off the bat to be like um hey what do you mean by that you know like i won't question it and i'm starting to practice a little bit more of that like if somebody says for example oh my gosh okay i went out to eat with a friend Mm -hmm. okay and She was being very racially profile-y, if that's a word. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm like, wait, is she saying what I think she's saying? You know what I mean? Being a little racist. Not a little racist. It was. It was. was, I think it was. was. And in that moment, no, it was. It was. In that moment, I was like looking around, kind of like shocked, first of all, that she was saying this like in general because i had i again i had just seen her after a few years and so yeah. i should have like i know what i did is i switched the conversation over because i was like i don't agree with what you're saying but i don't want to confront it right now and i'm not about to like like we just are meeting up as girlfriends True. and you're you know you're touching on this topic so i tend to be that but um there was a time well i think i can ramble a lot honey so why don't you tell me maybe okay. one <laughs> Maybe one boundary that somebody has crossed. This is if Natalie had her reins on on cameras. But something that I can't forgive is, I don't know if I've mentioned this in the podcast previously, but when I was really young, I had a lot of stuff stolen from me. And so whenever people like cross that boundary of, I want to hurt you emotionally, or I don't care about how you feel as long as I get mine, like, you know, Pokemon cards or whatever, I can't forgive, right? So especially if they know that they hurt my feelings in particular. Do you want to mention what that was that you got stolen? So no, like yeah, I had friends that would come over to my house and they'd steal like my video games, my Pokemon cards. They'd just like take advantage and of my you friendship. you knew, right? You knew, but you wouldn't say anything? Yeah, because I valued the friendship more than the things that I had. That's so You know, sad. which is like really sad. But I, then I got a little older and then I started getting a little bit like, okay, no, this isn't right. I can't get Resentful. my stuff stolen in that way. So... I still hold, you know, to this day, I was like eight or nine or still really, really young. Mm -hmm. And I still do not forgive any of those friends for stealing my things, you know? Yeah. It kind of reminds me of my very first manager that I ever had. Um, He, when we ended our, you know, business relationship, we ended on not great terms. And I'll never forget what he told me that to this day, I'm like, I should have said something to him. Mm. He It basically went from, oh, my God, I love working with you to all of a sudden being like, um, well, now that I know that you don't want to work with me, let me just tell you that you never even made me enough money and it wasn't even worth my time and this and that. And it just completely switched to the point that it left such a nasty taste in my mouth (laughs) that I was literally like so this is the real person so okay so I see how it is you know like it also reminds me of this one guy that I dated that I no longer wanted to date and so when I told him it was an instant switch like scary switch and I was in the car and I saw the switch you know and I was like, Lord, help me get back home. Like, I should not have <laughs> broken up with him here in this car. No, you can't do that when you're like still dependent on them to give you the I ride. No, I was very young. No, no, no. I wasn't dependent on him to give me the ride. And to be honest, like I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't make someone do that for me if they yeah. didn't want to. We were in the car. I didn't know how else to break it to him. And so I just told him, hey, I don't think this is going to work out, blah, blah, blah. I was probably very gentle and probably, you know. Um, but I just remember he like was speeding a little bit. He was like, but like, but like so are these people that you wouldn't forgive? Like, does that lead no, go into I like would, the question or, I mean, it's, I don't know. Have I for like, yeah, have I you guess. ever had 
I forgive people you. you can't forgive is what I'm saying. Like, like they've done you dirty so bad that like you're just like, fuck, I can't talk to this person. I don't see them the same way anymore. I do forgive. I do. Because I have a family member that I feel has done a lot of really mean things to me. And I have forgiven that person, but I don't associate myself with that person. And I'm very much distance myself from that person, you know, so that's okay. kind of the way that I go about it. But then, OK, going along those lines, you you do. So you have learned to forgive people. Oh, yeah. Is what you're you trying need to, say. to forgive. It's like, you know, that Buddha quote that they're like, if for, not forgiving someone is like holding a really hot coal and like burning, you're just yourself. holding it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like you're yourself. wanting to throw it, but you're just yeah. burning yourself like that really is what not forgiving someone is like you hold on to too much anger it's bad for you so you would say that well in terms of forgiveness then have you learned anything about it like has it ever bit you in the ass where you forgave something someone and then they go around and like hurt you again yeah well that that family member i've had another thing but i don't i'm not really willing to talk about it in the the podcast to be honest which is also kind of funny like i think that i am learning to set my own boundaries with my audience as well yeah. It's like, what do I want to share versus what don't I want to share? You know, and I think that's also important. I think a lot of times creators can feel like they are just an open book and everybody deserves to know everything about them. And even though it might sound weird from the outside looking in, it's like you deserve that. You deserve whatever privacy or not to talk about things or okay, like, for example. OK, <laughs> I know I'm rambling a little bit. No, but, go ahead. It's your okay. time, yeah. So there's this um, influencer. Her name is Valeria Lipoeski. Mm-hmm. She's going to be actually at the retreat as well. Oh, wow. And so I saw her randomly on TikTok. And it's one of those TikToks where somebody randomly comes up to you on the street and is like, hey, how much do you make? You know? Oh. And you could tell it made her really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And she was trying to set a boundary of like, Hey, you're like a random man. I'm not going to tell you, like, I feel uncomfortable. Let's switch the topic. She was being very kind about it. She did end up kind of giving in and responding a little bit. Uh And then in the comments she wrote to him and she was like, Hey, this was very, she said something along the lines of like, this kind of crossed my boundary and I don't feel comfortable like you you know, doing something like this to people like it might feel like it's great in on, in your eyes. But like if you're just bombarding someone and instantly like asking them, like, are you a virgin? Are you? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. intense and you shouldn't feel obligated to. Reply. But you, you do understand that that's the entire setup of that TikTok style. I know that. And then I think from an outside person or from a person consuming the content, if she would have not responded, I think people would have been like, oh, she's such a bitch. Like, why didn't she just like, oh, she doesn't want to share how she got to where she is, you know? But it's like from her perspective and then seeing her message, it's like, you can, why can't you hold up those, you know? Yeah. Walls like, like you of- can be as private. Or as little private as you want to be. Yes, yes. Which kind of reminds me of that next thing that you were going to show us. Yes. So we spoke about forgiveness, right? We spoke about learning and, and, you know, growing from forgiving people. And then you just mentioned privacy. And and also, like, being on camera can kind of change the way you act, Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, my God. It affects so many things, especially when you know you're on camera. And just I, this is a little bit off topic from the script, but there is a politician who's doing really well on TikTok. Mm-hmm. He's speaking very like grounded. And in his most recent TikTok, he was talking about how and this is this is slightly political, but I'm, it's not in favor of anybody. Right. It's he's talking about how politicians know when to show anger and they do they get angry because it gets them coverage. So they're like actors. It gets them coverage nationally on TV. But he says that when they are in closed doors, kind of having like debates and, and like whatever normal stuff that they're not like that, they're completely different and they're actually like reasonable. So he's saying that that anger plays into them getting more airtime on TV. And so they don't, they fake anger. Well, that's interesting. It reminds me of my friend, Michelle Curry, who just recently was in the creator clash, which is like a boxing thing with a bunch of creators. Yeah. She, was you know with boxing you're meant to like kind of create beef amongst the rivals it's so cheesy at this and point so now, yeah. she said that like after the fight ended the first thing she did with the girl is they hugged because <laughs> they literally like it was just innate they were like oh, they hugged 
And that um, they just kind of started talking about, oh, my gosh, this like how much how stressful were you? And she was like, I was so stressed. And and then she was like, but we had to put on like this face and like this and that, you know. And I think it's interesting that you mentioned that. Like, I always think about, you know, the obligation that creators have to be the the real self on video as they are behind the scenes. That is just not true. Everything is so staged. Yeah, that isn't true. Even to some extent, like us here talking, obviously we're going to filter some stuff out with our mindset. Even though I will say out of all the platforms that we have, this is the one that we're the most unfiltered. This is the one where we're like real. And and I do, I know at some point we were going to like mess up, you know, there was an interesting comment that said from the previous episode, um, we were talking about our relationship and you were talking about how I used to look at girls. And I was like, no, nah, that was in your head. <laughs> yeah. So someone was in the comments is like, yo, he's saying it's in her head. Like, that's all messed. That's so messed up. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. blaming her. No, no, and like, no. you saw that comment probably. I, I don't didn't know. see it. But what I'm noticing with the podcast is like our words can really get misconstrued yeah. because as opposed to like a YouTube script for me where I actually sit down, I bullet point. There's not a lot of controversial things. I'm teaching yeah. you how to wake up early, how to fall asleep, self-improvement, blah, 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 how to journal. You know, I'm realizing this podcast is really going to like rival, not rival, but just create emotions with people in a good and in a bad way. And I don't know if I'm prepared for that. Think about so going on beef just because it was so interesting to me, the whole beef amongst creators, you know, a lot of it is artificial. It's so fake, right? So in terms of boxing, for example, you know, like I wouldn't be surprised if Jake Paul and Logan Paul are actually really, really genuinely nice people. Mm -hmm. But a lot of what they do is an act, you know, like in in the boxing world, like they have to like talk shit to like the person that they're boxing with because they need to sell tickets. Right. Right. And and we'll we'll sell tickets, uh, arguments between them. And everybody wants to see them kick their ass like each other's ass. Right. I'm not their demographic. But, But then it ends. And then, like, you don't see them arguing anymore. Maybe they'll, like, bring up, like, uh, like they'll play fun at each other. But they're really good showmen. Like, they really sell their their product very yeah. well, right? Changing gears, because that's, like, very intense, obviously. Oh, actually, you know, that reminds me of, like, PewDiePie and Mr. Beast. How it was, like, this whole thing with them together. Okay. Well, they were, like, like almost trying to... Um, what was it with this one channel T series? Yeah, with T series, yeah. it was like a completely, you know, they they picked that channel on purpose. They fabricated. It's yeah. an entire thing. It was which, so meticulous. Which I was a part of this brain trust, and it was so cool because a lot of these guys would also fabricate. Um, like for example, we need to get to ten million so that we can beat so and so celebrity, and that was a tactic to help them grow. And I haven't seen tactics like that that work so effectively in twenty twenty three. Like, seriously, we we had a small beef with like five minute crafts, for example. We kind of created that little thing where but we, we kind of created we that kind of made fun real. of their channel or whatever. They were kind of like copying and doing all the like hack stuff. Right. No, I was pissed. That was. Yes. That was the one time. And because when, when I look at that time, I'm like, this is a big ass company. They really have to copy me like do, like that is not a form of flattery. They were legitimately stealing my <laughs> ideas, just waiting, you know, and I will say I don't want to compare myself to five minute crafts because I don't do yeah. shitty things like like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah They yeah. have a little bit more of a. Uh, they ruin hacks on YouTube. Let's just keep it at that. In my opinion, in my opinion, bulk, bulk hacking and then like all this vertical stuff or whatever. But okay, moving on. There's this really interesting video that's been, you know, circulating online and all this stuff, right? It's about these two girls at a baseball game who are making fun of this girl that's like in the (gasps) forefront of the video. I saw it. That's so Can you first of all, give me your thoughts on the video? Okay, so pretty much to describe the video in case you guys haven't seen it. It's a girl who is really feeling herself and taking pictures of herself at this baseball game. So imagine yourself, you're doing that, right? That kind of already makes you feel a little self-conscious in public, I feel. Yeah. <laughs> when And then all of a sudden you start hearing these like three, two girls like laughing at you and poking fun at you. And even like in the viewfinder of your camera, you're seeing that they're kind of like poking little silly uh, gestures, gestures, flicking off, doing yeah. something. That would make me feel really bad too. 
it would make you feel bad. But to be honest, you know what I would have done? Mm. I would have straight up turned around and just stared at them. <laughs> you know what's funny? I would have. You know what's funny? Cardi B. so immature. Cardi B actually she did? spoke up and said that she would have beat their ass. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. She spoke about, up about it. So what okay, I think. I would never do that. What I think is actually interesting about TikTok is that it gets celebrities to give their opinions on everyday topics and things that are going on. Yeah. You know? So. That was pretty messed up. It was really controversial. Uh, the girls obviously were mean girls. A lot of the people cl- commented and labeled it as a mean girl attitude. The you Hailey know? Bieber attitude. Yes. That's so embarrassing now that that's her whole like shtick. I feel yeah. bad for her. A lot of people are saying that the mean girl era is over. That that used to be like in the 2000s, it's 2010. It's always been out of style. It's never been cool. No. I mean, it's never been. It's just that people are kind of standing up for the little people. The, the, like, the people that can't like stand up for themselves sure. or speak up. Yeah. So then what ended up happening with that? So what ended up happening was that she posted the video. Was like all these girls behind her being like super mean. Right. So then... It went viral. People found out where they worked. They like oh, bombarded shit. her job with like really bad reviews. And then all of a sudden it was like this thing where the boyfriend created a video saying like, oh, you guys are taking this too far. Like it's ruining like her livelihood and her, like the boyfriend of the girls that were making fun. Yeah. Of yeah. Her. And then it turns out that like the, the dad owns the company and like everybody's like their whole business is like out of whack. Right. Because of people leaving bad leaving reviews. bad reviews, and the reviews are like, "Why do you employ blah blah blah?" Like her name, I can't Ugh, remember her name. That's sad. What I'm trying to lead into is, how do you feel about like this mobilized justice? Mm. Like everybody just brings down like the gavel, like a judge. Like you are like, you know, it's rough. I think. Well, okay, I think that you shouldn't undermine what they did, right? Like, that's pretty messed up. If I was even viewing it from an outsider perspective, I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah. You know, I would even stand up for the girl, to be honest. I'd be like, you guys are being really rude. Like, that's not like, why are you doing that? You know, like that. But um, I also feel bad for I don't know, honey, because to be honest, I don't want to be that girl. But like when I watched the video, I was really mad. (laughs) <laughs> I was mad. No, and and you're totally I valid with feeling that. I way. was upset for the girl because I felt like that that could really do something to like your self esteem and just make you feel lonely. And I don't know. It was it was very rude of them. But then I also feel bad, obviously, for the other girl. It's just like I feel bad for Haley Bieber. Like I feel like the hate is just too much. Like why? You know, I don't know. One of the comments that really stood out to me was. They were being extra, so they're receiving extra. Ooh, and that's true. It was really strong, but at the same time, right? I don't want to. This is one video that I'm using as an example of mobilized justice by a lot of people, <gasps> but there's a lot of videos out there, you know, of that happening and also not working. Okay, you know, I don't know. You haven't watched Love Is Blind, but like the finale. Yeah. Gosh, I just forgot her name. You guys help me out here. She has brown hair. But anyways, um, she was brought onto the show. She was a very much a mean girl or she was showcased that way. Yeah. yeah? And um, the audience freaking was laughing at her when she was explaining. So basically she did this. She was like, um, so look at the camera. What do you do? That'd be funny. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> do it. <laughs> she was like, so it's like, um, I, I think her name was Irina. Irina, please let us know what your thoughts are on it. I never think she was like, um, so I just need a minute. And like, just imagine <laughs> all of a sudden that people are laughing in the audience. And so she's like, <laughs> she broke character. No, she didn't break character. But I think even she was shocked that the audience was laughing at See, her no. because it came across so fake. You know, it's that anger thing that we were talking about at the beginning I feel like a lot of people go on like The Bachelor, they go on these shows with an idea of the personality they want to portray. And here's the reality. Your real self will always come out. It doesn't matter. It no, really doesn't. I th- no, no, no. Seriously. I think eventually some, but- you will slip up. If you're trying to be like someone you're not, eventually you will slip up. But Okay. What if it's like the opposite? What, what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people that go on these shows being extra mean. And actually being uh, cruel because they know that they'll be like that highlight at the beginning of the next next bachelor. Like, oh, this girl's a bitch. But, you know, a lot of people don't 
like a lot of people would say, I don't want to be that girl that's that's portrayed poorly. But a lot of people are okay with, with being, being portrayed poorly as long as they get more airtime. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, sure. I don't know in what world you think that's good for you down the line. It's a very short term. Yeah. Attention. No, I totally agree. I think it's the wrong way to go about things. I, I don't understand how anybody thinks that's okay. Like, I always see that one random ass boy, not boy, man and woman on like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Yeah. That's just like wacky. And you're like, nobody would do this in real life. You know, I'm sure it's produced. It's and planted. Stuff like that. They, they plant sure. people just to be wacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I've got that. All right. So, just like, what are your final thoughts about online mobilization, mobilized justice? What are your thoughts a bit about mm. it, a bit about about it? One of the best lessons I ever learned in college was that you should never group think. Because you know what I mean? Like you should look at that video for yourself and really feel like what do you think the girl should have been reprimanded with? Like or what do you think, you know, as opposed to just like going along. Do you think losing her job is no. over the top? Yes, I do. I agree. Yeah. I feel bad for her, but I also, I, it's, it's kind of like, but, again, so what is but wait, the right amount of, you know, castigo against that? Like what, what, so she did something, she's going to get something for doing that. To be what honest, I think it should have just been like the girl that felt that, which I know, oh my God, I could go in so many different ways, but just like messaging her privately being like, Hey, this is really her. And just. You know, you should think about your actions and then just leave it at that. You no. can't change someone. I, I could, you could already know like how the girl's going to action me yeah. and dick about it. But that's the thing. You really can't change how somebody is. It's unless they feel it with them themselves. You know, I bet this girl will do something very similar again. She, this doesn't make her learn her lesson or anything I, like that. I feel like she really fell into like her intrusive thoughts. Oh, right? really? How so? Like she, the whole like, you know, finger thing, like being in the back, like flicking it off. I feel like a lot of people like think of things. But they don't like follow through. You know what I mean? And she let it happen. Well, she was also with a group of friends that was kind of like all hyping each other up to do that. You know, so I think that can also get in the way because even in Love is Blind, Irina, the mean girl, I think that was her name. Sorry, guys. With Michaela was what they like kind of became mean girls. But then when Michaela wasn't there, she wasn't really a mean girl. It's like it brought it out of her, you know, you know, in the show Mean Girls, I feel like the the main mean girl the blonde girl georgina she was the mean girl and Wait, I, what, is her name georgina guys i'm forgetting everybody's regina name. george <laughs> georgina. <laughs> georgina. georgina i'm thinking of sorry I've, I've been watching yeah. georgina <laughs> um i think the other girls weren't that mean you know <laughs> the, the the blonde one that that could sense the weather like she was just kind of like like doofy <laughs> but was she mean like i don't even know and i feel like at the end they all kind of lightened up right because there was like that one Leader. leader yes the leader <laughs> yeah, exactly, of the pack yeah. but with like intrusive thoughts what are you like what are you going towards well that? okay so we had an episode a while back about adhd if you haven't seen it go check it out it's really great it's a full hour of us talking about adhd but well it, my experience with adhd it brings about a lot of intrusive thoughts more than oh, normal it's interesting dennis recently was like that you read an article i think it was on reddit yes. about ocd ocd right? and intrusive thoughts yes and so you were just kind of describing it for me and um, basically like asking me kind of if I thought, were you asking me? Or First, I was trying of- to see if you had OCD also, <laughs> which they had actually crossed out within the, you know, large document folder thing that you have yes. about your psychoanalysis, right? Yeah. But, you know, the intrusive thoughts, Have do you ever get intrusive thoughts? All the time. It's really scary, to be honest. And are they like bad very bad i get terrible i really do how bad are they like about pain about you know things that you wouldn't want to share or say because a lot of people said that they're so bad that it's things that they can't either they can't write on the internet because it's like that bad for me like intrusive thoughts really don't make sense first of all they come out of nowhere so like for example i'll get up to go to the bathroom and get like a really bad thought like a bad intrusive thought so i'll give you like a little example you know, like when Alaya passed, I just kept repeating everything over and over. And all of a sudden I was thinking like, what if my sister gets pregnant and now she she like passes again? And like I really went deep. I had to get myself yeah. out of it. That's that sounds more traumatic. 
Well, that was PTSD for sure. But in terms of intrusive thoughts, I was on my way to the gym this morning at like 4 a.m. in the morning. And I think the news really affects me. So like everything that has to do with like shootings and stuff like that really gets in my head. And so yeah. I have a lot of intrusive thoughts about that. See, I get intrusive thoughts of like, I'm driving on the highway. I'm like, what if I just fucking click this? Really? Like, it's weird. I, I get that sometimes. Like, I'm driving. I'm like, I just, what if I just go oh, like that? Oh, yeah. No, I've and I just fucking those. like hit the wall. Okay. No, no, no. I've gotten those thoughts or, as you're well. You're chopping onions. I'm like. Like your finger. Like it's weird. I, I it's mm. like things that like you, you know, shouldn't think about. You know what's interesting? My intrusive thoughts don't ever really include me harming myself. It's more others harming me or me oh. getting in like a situation where I'm being harmed That's, as opposed to me harming myself. Is that intrusive though? That seems fear. That's not <laughs> you know, surprisingly, no, you're you're Going about it in a totally different way that I didn't expect. Really? Well, that's you know, how I really feel. People tend to say that intrusive thoughts or ideas that of actions that they would go through. They would they would go through and in, in doing. So like I'm at the mall, I'm on the third floor, and I think about jumping. I you know, that's like an intrusive thought. Or like I see a child and I I think about like kicking it. Like a like a like a like a Wait, like a kid. You know what's terrible about that? Dennis has said that to me so I've said many it times. Before. I'm like, can you not think about that? But it's like I want to share my intrusive thought with you, yeah. but like it's like I, I shouldn't share it. I do think intrusive thoughts are. I don't know what the Latin root word of it, but it does feel like it's meant to be personal. Be personal. Yes. Like I think maybe it's something you would share. I guess with a spouse, sure. Or with like a therapist or a friend. You know, no, no, you shouldn't share it with anyone. No, you shouldn't. Well, it depends on how benign it is, though, because like some examples that someone gave was someone has this idea that they're on the Truman Show. And so that's an intrusive thought. They start oh. acting as if they're being filmed Wait. all the time. And I have that. I have that, too. <laughs> that happens to me, except it's more like for a YouTube channel where it's like I'm doing my makeup randomly. And I'm like, hey, guys, today <laughs> they, were, they were talking about how their eight year old niece acts as if she's on youtube and Aww. and acts out like like hey everyone today i'm gonna be putting on like blah 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 or whatever it's true other people are talking about imagining excruciating injuries in very strong detail no that never happens to me thank god that must be really horrible because like your mind controls your world so i can't imagine feeling that and then someone else said along with intrusive thoughts is the intrusive music so all the time never stops just broken oops i did it again like like it just like enters your brain wait that's so a thing over when you and wake over up. it's like in your mind when i wake up in the morning sometimes there's some random ass song i haven't heard in years i'm like what are you doing here yeah i don't please know please get out of my head i was i was playing call of duty with juan and then i got this like random word that just entered my mind i can't even say it now because it was that random like i can't even remember what it is but in that moment i was like wow this just appeared out of nowhere you know the thought the thought it's like a random definition of like uh just i don't know it was like an architecture term i don't what even do heck? architecture it's so weird wait that is actually really weird i would say for me as well um well shoot i lost my train of thought because i was gonna read some of the comments from the last video or you want to move into something well different? i mean i have a, a action-packed Oh, go for video it. Video already, right? It. Okay. So I actually have some random fun facts of the day, which I haven't been able to do in a long time, but we are traveling very soon. Yes. We're traveling tomorrow. Yes. So I wanted to tell you a very awesome fact about traveling. Please don't. And it's not bad. It's not bad. Thank God. So in 1981, <laughs> hear this out. In 1981, American Airlines offered a lifetime unlimited business class package. Oh my. God. And for they sold it for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, lifetime business package. All right, and you could add a guest to it for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You would be able to fly first class okay. forever. Why do I feel like you think that's a good deal? <laughs> okay, listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know how much business class is, but I don't travel. Okay, that not much a lot of people all. got it, but a couple that got it flew so much within their first year that it cost american airlines one million dollars it's crazy right i don't believe that and flew over 30 uh million miles mm. over their lifetime it's crazy i don't know why that stat doesn't sound 
real. It's real. Me. No, it's legit. No, I believe the whole airline thing that they sold that amount. But yeah. even I can't afford that. $250,000 to just fly business Natalie, class. Like there's like really rich people out there. <laughs> and if there there are deals like this that are literally made for them. Like this is like one of those too good to be true things. Well, all I know is I am dreading the trip. It's 16 hours. And I mean, I, I hope to God. There's a little bit of leg room. I know when I went to Bali, it was very comfortable. I was shocked how comfortable it was. But girl, I don't know. We got to do some yoga. Let me tell you this. This flight alone cost us like just going. It was Mm -hmm. like $5,000. It could be a little bit less. I think it was like four ish something. Imagine it was free. Imagine you could go to Spain at any moment you wanted to. You can go to France. You could go to like Miami for like yeah, a, but for to the anything. Cost of two hundred fifty thousand plus one hundred for your life. I know your that, life, but that's like a freaking house down. Like that, I don't know, Natalie. It just, it's an in, okay. Okay, maybe it I'm makes wrong. sense if the person. First of all, if they had to travel already for business, it's an investment. Oh, if the business can pay for it, absolutely. Yes. You think this fucker paid personal? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But even, okay. I guess I look at it from a small business perspective. I'm like, that's a lot of money. It is. But from a big ass brand corporation, maybe, I guess. If you, I don't know. If you travel a hell of a lot, it's a great, great deal. I, I want to know from you guys. Let us know down below what you really think. Okay. The next super random fact <laughs> is one in five German parents regrets having children and would prefer to live their life without them why germans why is this just a german study it's a german study i don't know <laughs> german fat. people are very real about about things and they are intrusive thoughts they say it oh no back to the baby questions jeez what are your thoughts about that having children regretting having children well i think we spoke about this too in another podcast where it's like i get a lot of um you know once you see something and you like it or you interact with it engage in some way it will just keep feeding it to you so what i get fed a lot is like here's why having kids suck let's because you like that video you no, like i it. never you liked like. it i never liked it i just watched it through and i was like interesting because you gotta admit seeing women nowadays talk about the fact that having kids isn't something that they really want or you know i never grew up seeing my mom talk about that even though to be quite honest with you this was my mom versus my dad. Mm. My dad was like, Uy, que bueno tener hijos, me encanta. I love a big family, you know? My mom was like, Uy, no tener hijos es muy duro. Having kids is too hard, you know? And I always saw her and I was like, damn, she's so ungrateful. But like, let's be honest here. Women get it r- much harder than men. It, it's <laughs> just the facts. <laughs> you're right, you're it right. It is. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue that, of right? course. Yeah. Like, I can't, like... Once we decide to have kids, honey, I'm giving up so much more yes, than you. I agree. And that is just so messed up. And that's just how life is. And I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. Something else that I hate. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no. God, no. Something else that I hate. <laughs> what did I do? Something else that I hate. This might not make sense to nobody. And maybe I misinterpreted this. Guys, I'm new to the Bible. But here we go. In the Bible, it says that God made us women suffer because basically like we're less than a man so like in labor it's because there are a lot of ava, unfair things ava or like. eva or eva fuck because she you're just first. getting everybody's name wrong today i know i know no but i'm just like I, I always think about that i'm like am i gonna really be suffering because god because i i sin first i that's fucked up i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm going to get the epidural. All right, all right. I'm getting the epidural, right. guys. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Literally, his mom is always like, Natalie, yo lo hice without epidural. I did it without epidural. You can do it. She's like already like feeding this into me. I'm like, Natalie, you can do it however you want in the moment, whatever you feel. I don't feel pressure. I don't, I don't want to pressure you into doing it in any way that you don't want to. My boundaries, I want the epidural. Okay. <laughs> We're moving into a fucking awesome section we're about to do. It's Sign so, me up. I'm so happy for this section. I'm really, really hyped. Would you rather? Okay. Right? Tell so me. So let me just really quickly check time, see how we're doing. Okay. We're doing really well. What mm-hmm. time? Okay. Remember, somebody's arrived. I know that, girl. And I got the time right there and relax. Okay. We're flying through it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you rather? That all right. I'm so excited I'm for I'm so hyped for segment. this section. Okay, okay. <laughs> Guys, in the comments, you have to respond to it 
or like in the car if you're just listening to this on spotify or apple podcast which you can rate by the way rate us five stars um it helps a lot have a conversation with whoever you're with and just be like would you rather do it or not okay would you rather have a horizontal butt crack or a vertical mouth what the i but see this is why i don't like these little (laughs) natalie can you please they're honestly natalie so (laughs) would you rather have a horizontal butt crack or a vertical mouth Oh my god, Mama, I don't, I don't, I hate thinking about this stuff. It like, cause I tell you why. Why? It feels like a life death situation and it's such a stupid no. question. Can you? I have, I have a couple of these. All can right. you just slide a through? Horizontal it? ass crack. Ass crack. Okay. Can you imagine going down a slide? No, I'm imagining pooping. That's what I'm imagining. What someone said was like the vertical oh god, mouth. Like you could eat a taco without turning your head. Yeah, let's do the vertical mouth. The vertical mouth, I think, would be much better, <laughs> personally. <laughs> okay. Natalie, would you rather be a door or a window? Honey, these are freaking Davi questions. No, Natalie. They are. They're can you go with it? Oh, my God. Would Just I rather answer. be a door or... <laughs> <You're> so excited, <laughs> too. A door or a window? A window. I want to see outside. You know, you kind of gave me door. <laughs> Why? It feels sheltered. Yeah. No, I want a little bit. Of, I'm I, a, I, I think of you as an indoor person. I, I think of you like to yourself. Yes, I am. But honey, I don't want to be stuck to being slammed or something. No. So you see yourself as a window? Yes. Are these more like in depth? These no, like, no, no. They're like dreams interpretation or something. <laughs> like what is the meaning of this? All right. Would you rather be able to have sex and never orgasm or be able to have orgasms but never have sex? Uh, orgasms. <laughs> but you can't have the sex. Yeah. <laughs> you just odd. Okay, moving on. These are too random. No, no, they're great. All Comment right, below they're if gonna you be like this. Comment below if you really don't, because I think they're just a little wacky. That's all. It's important to get feedback. <laughs> this is really awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather never enjoy music again or never enjoy food again? Uh, music really i would i love food I, even though i get it like with music it's like it's a deeper type of like you know sensation you, are, you know natalie is one of the people who never had a spotify apple podcast um uh, apple account or any of these music things and like, not even a pandora till like, this year guys. i never heard you like just play music and you answered that so quickly like you were so adamant about like the food I, like boom right i want to make sure i always experience food hello i would pick food too but I would take a little bit longer to answer it. it. I would miss music more. Yeah. Okay. Would you rather be constantly sticky all over your entire body forever or constantly itchy all over your entire entire body forever? Sticky. I hate being itchy. I have eczema, grew up with it, went to hospitals because of how much I scratch for it. You don't want to be itchy. Let's just be sticky. I would be sticky as well. (laughs) Although I really hate, like, you know, when you leave Denny's, like that feeling no, of honey. like syrup, you, you like pancake mix. That, like I, no. It's so gross. Oh, like that. Like, like that, that. Like in the hands. Not, it's like it's like that's why you wash your hands. But no, no amount like of I washing do. hands is going to take that maple syrup off. It's gross. Dennis doesn't wash his hands. <laughs> OK, Natalie. Thank you so much. OK, last one. Let's see. <laughs> Would you rather have the ability to run at 100 miles an hour or fly at 10? Um, I guess run at a hundred. Run at a hundred. Yeah, when a am I people, gonna fly? A lot of people say fly because like you can just like avoid things. You just like fly straight. You know, when you if you run, you still have to avoid buildings. You still have to kind of like use the road. Can birds fly faster than you? I don't know. I just it feels too slow for me. Some other people said that you would wear like a suit and go straight up really high and then like kind of fall, sort of, like sideways. And that concludes Would You Rather. Wow, I was so hyped for that. And it actually turned out really good. I'm really happy <laughs> with the results. But in general, uh, I love you. I, like my topic for today was forgiveness, you know. Oh. And, you know, we we touched on the topic of the girls in the back of that one girl. Um, I think sometimes things can go get a little too far, you know. Oh, 100%. And, you know, once the deed is done and, like, she loses her job or whoever, Karen, all these Karens online that get filmed and, like, we all have lives. It's really crazy, but what you do online can affect someone. And, I mean, at the end of the day, you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, she lost can her I job or whatever. Can I just mention but, like, one thing that shook me to the core? Yeah. 
I was at a beautiful bookstore. Actually, it was Daiso, my bad. Not a bookstore. Remember in LA? Yeah. And this lovely lady comes up to me and she's just making conversation. She's so lovely. Oh, just I remember so that. so social with me. I was like, oh my God, this lady's cool. You know, like just social. She, I, I could kind of see that there was something <laughs> like off of there. Well, I couldn't. And then freaking... I see. I think this is on Karina Garcia's um, IG story. She shares the lady that I saw, the same lady being racially, racially being racist towards like Hispanics. Yeah, it was like a food truck person or like a food vendor. I was shocked. Can you just imagine? You just saw this really cool lady. You're like, she's so cool. And then you see the post and you're like, oh, my God, what? Because she have treated me like that's scary. I thought I was like, she could have done that. To us. She could have been scared. like super wild. And, and I think she even like spit in their face. Like it was very <laughs> like bad. It was terrible. It was terrible. You can catch people on a bad day and then shit. Nah, that's not a bad day. That's that's a bad person. All right. Well, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. We are going to Ibiza soon. So we had to kind of like squeak this one in. And I'm really happy with the outcome. We talked about <laughs> a lot of nice topics. Check out our post on. Oh, my God. Bob, I'm scratching. Well, you're. <laughs> fucking on camera <laughs> Wait, you're what? gonna be shown you're gonna be shown the way you said that anyways. it's so ap- apparent that you're just gonna be on camera come on now all right thanks for watching we love you and we'll see you in the next no oh, that's my youtube channel be <laughs> sure to rate on spotify and podcast and also comment below subscribe to us on youtube and check out our ibiza trip tell them when our next episode comes out we haven't done it friday Every Friday. We're here every Friday. saying it so I say it to them. Come on. We will be here every single Friday. At 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Farewell, Peace out. Goodbye. A-Town. Is that the outro? (laughs) Sure.